Hey, hey, here out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. Today's project is going to be checking the valves on the 2276 engine. I have not made any inspections or adjustments. This thing's been running great ever since I put it back together. As you may recall, we took it apart just to uh, stop some oil leaks. The pushrod tubes were leaking. The rear main seal was leaking. We changed to a heavier flywheel. We put a different pulley on this side and we resealed the engine put it get back together. It has a 110, a 120 cam. Um, I'm going to set the valves at six thousandths as recommended and I'm using stock aluminum push rods that's why I'm setting them at six thousandths if I was using chrome only push rods I would probably set them at uh, zero or one or at least where I could just spin them and I would be watching them a lot closer um, I'm using heavy duty single springs and seems to be working fine with the stock push rods as long as your valve geometry is correct now first thing I do is pop my distributor cap off see where my rotor I don't care where this rotor happens to be facing now you can rotate the engine make sure your engines uh, in uh, neutral and you can either rotate it with the alternator pulley nut or you can do it with the crankshaft uh, pulley nut or maybe just rocking it back and forth whatever you need to get it where your your lines are at um, zero so let's uh, rotate this puppy around to top dead center because that's just where we happen to be and I'm just gonna take this crescent wrench and go with it Exhaust in the way is exhausting. All right. So approximately top dead center. That's close enough. Now the other thing uh, I was going to do, I have these uh, bolt-on aluminum valve covers. You know, these things work pretty good. I've had some that do and some that don't. Okay, we'll try this again. So first thing we're going to do is... Uh, these little acorn nuts on the end are just to protect the threads and kind of like double lock nutting it even though there's a nylock washer underneath it. You will see what it looks like as we continue further. So I'm just going to set these down out of the way and I'm going to take these uh, nylock nuts off. Can almost do them. They're they're old and worn out, and you could probably replace them. They're uh, eight millimeter by 1.25 thread, so that's no big deal. It would probably be a good idea to have some stock stuff with you. I know when I go on this trip that I'm going to take some stock valve covers and bales, and uh, I'll admit, you know, these were on the car. They look nice. Uh, Fat Performance is an old name with the uh, Volkswagen performance industry and I can't remember there's some guys names is what those things uh, stand for now here's some o-rings and the o-rings were all dried out and cracking and that looks like I, these this is the side that I replaced them and I just got them out of the plumbing department at the hardware store the only ones I could find fat enough and uh, they have taken a set and they did not leak a bit so it's all good and I don't want to screw them up let's see how this oh, that's, plenty of oil in this valve cover I wonder why that is why is all that oil on this side why did that not drain back down to the engine? This is why we do our inspections. Holy smokes. I just got like a cup full of oil out of there. Hmm. I probably had it overfilled, which is already a testimony as to how well these things seal. So that's the way they look. They were just round O-rings. I'm going to reuse those. I'm going to look at my dipstick here. I 
I didn't really think it was that over full, but maybe it was. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. This baby was way over full and you could, I don't know if it showed up on the camera. Let me take a look here. Yeah, it was just, man, it's just pouring out of there. I'm just going to set these back out of the way. I'm not even going to change the valve cover gaskets. I'm going to take some with me. Wow. i got to get some paper towels. I'll turn you back on my... <laughs> <Should I? laughs> Look at all this oil that came out of there. And it's still coming out. And that's because we overfill them because we're at odd angles uh, when you're driving around those dunes. And you don't want to be running without oil. Your oil is going to only circulate oil if it's got the sump, the pickup in the sump. <sighs> so we got the uh, number one. Oh, that feels just dandy. It just, that's perfect. That's good. So number one is good. My goodness. That oil is still coming out of there. Okay. Now, I've completely switched. I'm going to go to number four cylinder because the firing order is 1432. I'm just rotating my engine software. And we're we're going to make a mess here. I had already loosened up these acorn nuts. Let's uh, see what kind of mess we can make on this side. Just nylock nuts. Pulling those off the valve cover. Washers off. Seems to me Okay, we got a valve cover vent on both sides. We've got this O-ring cooked. Now this was one of the bad O-rings that was originally on it. And I've got some brand new O-rings we're going to replace them with. Something with a little sponge. Even those, those did not leak, which is... Nice. Now, for some of you, this is just old stuff, but th these are what they call swivel foot rockers, adjusters, and then these nuts somebody brazed on these studs so that the valve covers would have something to bolt onto, and I'm not going to question them. They were on the car when I got it. Um, you know, a lot of guys got money and they want to do everything brand new and, and neat. It costs a lot. And I have tried from the very get-go on this project to uh, keep costs to a bare minimum. And, uh, okay. Got my feeler gauge. So... Perfect. You don't want them too loose. This is six thousandths. I have not adjusted these things since I assembled this engine. I only took it apart to put these two new O-rings on and to check it out because sometimes when you replace stuff, you uh, things settle in and it takes some time to move around. Okay, we're gonna go. 180 degrees on the crankshaft. This baby's hard to turn. It's got 9 to 1 compression. <laughs> but I live at high altitude. And I am worried how this is going to be at sea level. 
But the guy I bought the buggy from lived in California. That's where this car came from. And uh, he didn't say anything about it. He said he lowered the compression because it was even higher. He said it had 11 to 1. It only has 49cc heads. So I could see where that's possible. Just moving it to my timing marks, and uh, we'll go on to number three. Okay, intake feels good. This one's just a little bit tight. Number three. If you're ever going to have trouble with crap, it's always going to be number three and on this particular adjuster it's got uh, it's set up for allen screws these are my old Jeanberg adjusters okay so here's the allen wrench just gonna stick it in and loosen it. I'm going to loosen that just a tad. I'm going to snug the nut back down. Yep. Alright. So there it is. That's why I like these uh, little adjusters. Okay. That's even better. Okay. Let me take you off the stand. Uh, let me see if I can do it with you on the stand here. You ready for a ride? Okay. So I'm going to give you the close-up of those swivel feet adjusters. And you can see the Allen head. And you can also see that this is the... There's no spring clips here. This is what they call the solid rocker shafts. And you put shims in between them to take the slack out of there and you, you're always going to have a little bit of you need like a minimum of five thousandths uh, end play on those things so that when they heat up and expand they don't uh, bind up and you get a close-up look at these uh, they just brazed these studs and Instead of using a nut, it looks like a coupling nut here to extend that out so the valve covers will go on. And then the valve cover's got my valve cover vent on there. And we're just going to put it all back together here. Gee, goes right on when you... Now these bolt-on valve covers just have been the ticket. They have not leaked and uh, they look nice. And because they're aluminum, they're going to help dissipate some heat. And I got some uh, brand new O-rings here that I'm going to put on. Got these from the plumbing department at Ace Hardware. So now we're going to put our flat washers back on. And put our nylon nuts on. Now the difference between these and the spring bales, the spring bales, the stock ones, will always keep tension on that gasket. But you're in and out of the car, this engine is hanging out in the open and it's exposed. And that O-ring just squishes down a little. You don't want to over tighten these things. You know? <laughs> kind of make, try to make it as even as you can. And if you see any leaks or seepage, you can always continue more. And just to keep my threads looking nice and happy, instead of having that thread out there, we've got these 
acorn nuts we're gonna stick on the end here I might go one little bit more on that one Okay, that's it, buddy. So, these O-rings were okay, and this valve cover gasket was not leaking. And... Uh, so, we just put it back together. O-rings back on that were on it. They've kind of gotten flattened out, changed shape, but they originally were O-rings. They weren't leaking. That was nice. We'll save the old ones and we'll have to uh, go back to Ace Hardware. They only have two of them in stock. I would have bought a half a dozen of them. You know, you could, in a pinch, I suppose, you could take uh, a piece of inner tube or rubber bands or anything, string, paracord. If you're a, par a prepper, you got to have paracord, right? Got to do it all with that. I'm just going to snug that baby down. Yeah, that last trip I went on, I had overfilled it, and it didn't leak out. I'm glad of that, but, uh, okay, one more thing to check off our list here, huh? I did lose one of those acorn nuts already and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to clip it with my feeler gauge and bring this along with me and we got one step closer to getting ready for the trip. So hope that satisfied somebody's curiosity and uh, Maybe help somebody else out. You, like I said, aluminum push rods, you want to uh, go with the camshaft manufacturer's specifications, which is 6,000. If you're using the chrome only push rods, they don't grow as much, and you can get by. If it's a street engine, you probably want to run four to six thousandths anyhow, and it'll clatter a little bit more, but it's probably going to run a little bit hotter and it's going to be in the engine compartment and you probably won't hear it as much and you know I'm thinking that you check your valves when you change your oil every 1500 miles whereas a car like this uh, if you go out for a week's vacation you're probably going to have those valve covers off and just checking things out because we're just uh, brutally hard on these things while we are using them at least I think so you know um, put the valve put the uh, distributor cap back on right now before I forget there you have it thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy